Welcome back to the 99, where we are focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, and today's video is part one in a series of brewing basic videos, a guideline to follow no matter what commander deck you are brewing for. Now, do note this is coming from the perspective of a competitive commander player and brewer. Brewing basics, part one, the three paths to commander. This is the most important part. What do you want to play? As an eternal format, we have access to most every legendary in MTG's history to choose from, but that doesn't mean they are all competitive. Casimir the Lone Wolf, Alexei Zephyr Mage, Chandler, we can cross those off the list. When it comes to picking a competitive commander between the nearly 1,000 legendary creatures at this point, choosing branches into one of three paths. Will this commander function as part of the main combo? Will this commander be there for value and or as an outlet? Will this commander stop and or help in stopping opponents from winning? Now, before I jump any further into this guide, I want you all to know that you can help support the channel by supporting our partners over at TCG Player. If you enjoy the content you see here, well, guess what? You can help us out by buying your next singles, packs, and more by using the link in the description as a portion of those proceeds help to support us. So thank you very much for making that decision, as well as if you want to support us directly, Anchor, Patreon, and our Patreon members know this, you'll be thanked at the end of this video. And also any decks I brew on the channel, I like to play pickup games with our Patreon members. So if you're not a Patreon member and want a game with me on a new deck that hasn't been brewed on the channel yet, that's the best way to see these lists beforehand. Now, let's continue with those three branching paths. Examples of that first path are Savala, Teshar, Narumea, Godo, Micaius, Micaius? You'll notice a trend with these particular commanders. They're all monocolor. Examples of that second path are Marath, Timna and Thrasios, Kenrith. The trend you'll notice here is that these are all three to five color commanders. Examples of the third path are Grand Arbiter, Cabal, Lavinia. These are all mostly dual colored commanders. These observations are mostly musings as there are obvious exceptions to the aforementioned color trends. Gitrog is a potent value commander that also functions as part of the main combo. Likewise, Urza Highlord Artificer is a stacks commander in mono blue that also functions as an outlet. All that's important to note here is that mono colored commanders generally lean heavily on their chosen legendary to pull the weight of their 99. While multicolor lists have far more options to rely on in terms of tutors, interactions, and combos. To clarify, an outlet is a spell or ability to sink mana into, much like Kinnon's activated ability or simply casting the first sliver a billion times. So what does this all mean? Well, when considering that next legendary to be your commander, consider the three paths I've laid before you. Does the legendary you're considering efficiently execute on a combo with a high percentile chance of getting to said combo condition? Does the commander or commanders tutor, draw, or otherwise put cards in your hand or help do so once a combo within your deck has been accomplished? generally infinite mana. Or will this commander deftly stop your opponents from executing on their own game plan if the legendary you are considering can competently stride down one of those paths, then odds are likely it can be made competitive. Now let's take a look at that first path with one of my favorite commanders, Teshar Ancestor's Apostle. Is this the best deck? Tier 1? Hell no. Not by a mile. It lacks blue, green, and black. Commander's favorite colors. So what does it have going for it? Redundancy and a vast selection of the best stacks elements in MTG. I'll advise you review my past primers on Teshar to get a better understanding of how this list operates, but the general combo lines rely specifically on Teshar being in play to repeatedly sacrifice permanents and bring them back for value. When considering a commander like this, one that functions as the main combo, you either play for or against this commander. How do I mean? For instance, Mono White has access to Oriok Salvagers and Lines Eye Diamond as a potential combo. Does it make sense to play for this or focus on Teshar play lines? If you could reliably play for it, sure, but we have no efficient means to get Oriok Salvagers into play, and when we do, no great way to recover them should they die. Even more difficult is the decision to add Heliod Suncrowned. My list also uses Walking Ballista, so logically you would think to add another line of play, right? In this instance, no. The question to ask yourself when adding combo lines to a deck that focuses on the commander is the main combo is this. Will this detract or add to the main combo? Adding Heliod does nothing to help our main line of play, outside of an additional trigger for Teshar, 
but detracts in taking a spot that could otherwise go towards removal, recovery, or redundancy. A redundancy in this instance, and I mean strictly concerning Teshar, would be a permanent that sacrifices other permanents or creatures or artifacts, or an ETB or LTB -er that recovers artifacts and or historic spells. When you're going down this path, it's important the brew only include the most efficient play lines to make sure the deck can compete. Now, this is the same reason you see lists like Savala and Goto solely focus on the main line of play. It guarantees the best outcome for victory. Now let's take a closer look at that second path with Marath. This should be fresh for everyone still, having just provided a primer on the Elemental Beast. Marath is in a unique position as an outlet, as the card does more than just knock out opponents. By manipulating plus one plus one counters, you can do various things with Marath alone or in tandem with the deck. Unlike a commander that needs to be on the field constantly to yield results, we don't ever need to cast Marath until we've accomplished a ply line that offers infinite mana or simply set up an engine that will permit Marath to damage out the board on the spot. Being in Naya provides us with more tutors than the typical mono or dual colored list. This ultimately dictates the play lines we can feature in the deck. Here, something like Heliod's Sun Crowned in Walking Ballista makes sense. We have plus one plus one counter manipulation, infinite mana lines in a combo in and of itself, with multiple tutors to efficiently net a win. These layers go a long way into dictating the worth of a card in a given list. You'll hear or read brewers talk about flex spots. Now all that is are specific cards in a list that can be improved upon. The best decks have few to no flex spots. That is until something better comes along, like a new combo card, a tutor, a draw effect, a piece of removal that's better than the previous removal. It's all relative to what the deck is trying to accomplish. However, this second path happens to be the most efficient route, as its independence from the commander allows it to pivot more easily in terms of play lines. Whereas Yeeson, the wandering bard, relies on Yeeson, Marath getting removed Better yet, a Timna and Thrasios, or Tana, or Krom getting removed means little to the success of the deck. These decks are only ever playing their commanders for value or as an outlet. Lastly, let's consider the third path with Kambal. Being in Orzov, we're privy to various reanimator strategies and combos. Not only that, but we have access to some of the best stack spells in Magic. Basically, a stacks deck is all about resource denial, taxing, and manipulating the game such that your opponents have difficulty executing on their game plan. It is the most difficult strategy to play for as you're trying to accomplish two things at once. One, stifle your opponents without ruining your own game plan, and two, winning through incremental damage or through combo. Kambal is in a unique position as he both punishes Stormlist and fuels your life total to play various payoffs like Ad Nauseam, Necropotence, or in my build, Villas Broker of Blood. A Stax list's success isn't gauged by how quickly it accomplishes a win, but how well it functions at shutting down others from winning. The combos to be included here may or may not be decisive. It could focus on attrition with slow incremental damage, much like Tiny Bones, a combination of cards to permit a one-hit knockout, like my best friend Balan, or in Kambal's case, a line of play that outright destroys our opponents. No matter what path you choose, every list from mono to five color has its drawbacks. Three to five color lists fold to land hate. Things like Blood Moon, Back to Basics, Hall of Gemstone stop these lists in their tracks. You might think you'll always have your dork or artifact ramp out, but you won't and I'll be there smiling. Whereas monocolored lists suffer from their limited amount of resources being only in one little slice of the color pie. Limited interaction, limited tutors, limited resources. All this is to say, when it comes to brewing, your choice of legendary is everything. And furthermore, the fundamental truth to every successful commander is this. Consistency is king. From here on out, I wanna guide you to making better choices for your list. The nuances you likely question in the brewing process, from how many tutors or draw effects is enough, to how much removal and interaction, as well as the specific type should I use, what is an appropriate land count for the list, and how that relates to the amount of ramp you select, as well as the type of ramp, be it artifact, creature, ritual, 
There are a lot of components to consider, but if you're new to brewing, I'm here with some of the basics. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll focus on balancing your list, as well as my philosophies on making card choices. Now, it's that part of the video where I like to take a moment to thank my Patreon members, but before I leave all the rest of you, gang, if you wanna help support the channel, help support the content you see here, again, the best way to do so indirectly is through our partners over at TCG Player. I'm going to them right now to pre-order Tiny Bones, to pre-order Allosaurus Shepherd. This, this, I'm dating the video right now. But guys, if you wanna do so, that is the best way to help this channel indirectly as a portion of those proceeds go to help us out. So support yourself, support some of the best marketplaces in the world. It's the only, on one, only online marketplace, I think, TCG Player and help your LGSs that way. You're helping so many people to include your pal Pat, so thank you so much. And if you want to support us directly, you can do so via Anchor and or Patreon. And to those members, I want to say a big thank you. I feel like I thank you profusely, and I don't think that's even enough at this point, because you guys really do help make this show happen. You help me produce the content in ways uh, you don't understand. You don't know where that money goes. Those bags of coffee, it goes through so much coffee here. They really help, and I really appreciate you guys. It is my goal to get even better lighting soon, so we'll see if I can fish up the funds for that. But we've got a couple new members that I've emailed recently, and we're going to start with one now. Thank you, Austin, Taylor, Paul, Jeffrey. You guys are the best. Ave, John, Just Me, Rory. I, I hope this was useful for you. I know a lot of our guys are veterans, but... I do want to give you a deep dive into my thinking when it comes to the competitive commander scene. How I brew, because I do so many, and our tagline is how to brew a better commander. But Brian, Mikey Boy, Trevor, and Landers, they all know that better brewers than I. Paul, Corwin, Schmampy Tenenbaum, Tim, Taylor, and Adrian. Thank you guys so much for your support. It really does mean the world. Carlos, Kevin, Fighting Tears, Sir Fluffykins, Matthew, Kevin... Thank you guys so much. I, 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 I do mean that from the bottom of my heart. You are every historic spell to me. I just love Teshar. Sub Moxon, Adam, Dante, and Sarah. Thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate it. And girl, and girl. Josh, Matthew, Rennell, Trent, Gregory. Thank you for your support here on the channel. It means a whole lot. Harry, Dave, Leonardo, Christopher, Carl. You think I should just keep reading off names or should we go to like a single thank you system like everyone else? This feels more personal, right? Right? I don't know. I mean, this could get very long depending on how many people decide to help support this channel. Craig, Mason, Paul, Jake, frankly, give me your thoughts. Either in Patreon, here, just let me know. Frankly, Gullius, Xiaofan, Bruno, Jason, thank you guys so much for your support here on the channel. I do hope this video was helpful to you, and now you are a more successful brewer. Kev, Ali, Burden, you guys are the best. Josh, Clyde, gotta flip a page. Shaded, Frank, Jarn, thank you so much. Some of these are long-standing members, some of them aren't. But you'll be here. I hope. <laughs> Jared, Brendan, Shord, Nathan, thank you so much for your support. Javier, Oliver, the Holy Knight, Sam, Running Red. Thank you guys for your support over on Patreon and your commentary. I really appreciate you guys joining in on conversations there. It does help fuel the, the thought vessels in my brain. The thought vessels. The 2CMC stone that taps for one generic. Blech. Jordan, Nick, Luke, Leon, and Mace. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for your support over on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed the Brewing Basics video. I didn't feel comfortable giving my advice up until we've had nearly, nearly two years of experience here on the channel. So I feel like I am an authority when it comes to offbeat commanders. And I do hope that when it comes to brewing, these will fuel your thoughts and help you make better decisions. We always get folks asking on the Cauldron, the Deck Doctor channel now, what to make uh, decision-wise for their list. And I hope that with the right philosophies and the right guidance, uh, you'll know it yourself. So thank you guys for watching another episode here. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and as always, happy brewing, babies.